Y'all ever been to a dog park, bruh? Y'all ever been to a dog park? Because that shit's wild, bruh. I got myself a little doggy McDoggerson recently. Not recently, probably like five months ago in May. I got myself a little doggy McDoggerson. Before I go, getting a dog in the Bay Area is where I live. The Bay, the Yay Area. Getting a dog in the Bay Area. It's kind of hard, dog, because like, I think the problem is that there's a lot of woke people in the Bay Area. So when you're trying to get a dog, everyone is trying to adopt a dog, you know. And my ass is poor. I cannot afford to buy myself a little puppy. Because those little shits will run you up like a thousand dollars, you know. If you get yourself a little, a little corgi puppy or a little, a little labradoodle, those shits will cost you a thousand bucks. And then you got to bring that little shit home. And train it like a fucking, like it's a, like it's a literally like a baby, you know? That shit's gonna be pooping all on your floor. It's gonna be eating your iPad, eating your blankets. You're gonna have to like, you know, train it and shit is like, it's like bringing home a baby, you know? But you gotta teach it. You can't put a diaper on it. You just gotta let it shit on your floor until it's ready, until it learns that it's gotta go outside to shit, you know? And I, I ain't got the time more of a patience, money, to be getting no puppies, so, I try to go to, a, you know, adopt a dog, adoptadog.com, no, there's, there's no website like that, but, uh, you know, I tried to adopt a dog, and, let me tell you, that shit was not easy, bruh, cause, like, everyone, you know, I would find myself a little cute puppy online, not a puppy, you know, a little adult dog, a little, a little two to five year old dog online, you know, we don't want an old dog, cause that dog might die, and, I'm gonna be honest, like, another side, I'm afraid, I don't want no dog that's gonna die, because I don't want to, I, I never touched a dead thing before, so, you know, if you get, if you give me a 12-year-old dog and be like, yo, this, this creature might die in six months, I'm gonna be like, I, I'm not mentally, you know, at a state where I could be picking up a carcass, so, you know, I can't be getting no 12-year-old dog, so. You know, I went online, I tried to find myself a nice two to five year old dog, you know, to adopt from a shelter. And, you know, I was emailing all these places. But the problem is that, you know, every time I would email a place, it'd be like, yo, this dog's already been adopted. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Because, you know, I, I, I would, after the first few times that happened to me, I was like, okay, I got to be more on my shit. So I would, I would refresh, you know, the apps to adopt dogs like. Every, you know, every few hours, I, I'll fucking get my preferences down, like, fucking small dog, fucking two to five years old, fucking doesn't shit on the floor, you know, all my preferences ready, and I'll refresh that shit, and I'll be like, yeah, let me find myself a cute dog, nah, this dog, this guy, dog's got an ugly face, this dog's got big teeth, this dog looks like it's just shit on my floor, fuck this dog, and then I would find a good dog, you know, maybe it's a little unethical to be picky about dogs, but it's not good for the dog or me, you know, if I pick a dog I don't like, but, you know, I'd find a dog, email it, email the person who got the dog at the shelter, you know, three hours after they put this dog up, and they'd be like, yo, this dog's already taken too, I'd be like, what the hell's going on here, it seems like the, there's a greater demand for dogs than supply, and then I realized, you know, I live in the Bay Area, where there's a bunch of fucking woke people, so everyone, you know, buying puppies is unethical because we got a surplus of dogs in America. We got dogs up in the pound, you know. We got dogs, you know, in these itty bitty cages, you know. They in dog Guantanamo Bay, basically, you know. They just chilling, you know. The little trainer comes around, throws them a little, a little cheese its in 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 their little cage, and be like, "Here's your dinner." You know, walk around, walk around, maybe throw in, throw in an avocado skin to the dogs. Be like, eat this shit, you know. We got a surplus of dogs in America in these, in these really shitty <laughs> shelters. And then I realized people in the Bay Area, they know this. So more people are going to shelters instead of buying puppies 
because everyone here is woke and all these other motherfuckers who actually could afford puppies are infringing on my poor people, you know, supply of dogs, you know. But eventually I found myself a dog, you know, and I'm not trying to say any of this, you know. Dogs, you know, they're real creatures, you know. We shouldn't we shouldn't talk about them as if, you know, they're disposable little toys for us, you know. We got to treat them well. But you know, that was just my experience of getting a dog. But, you know, eventually I found my dog. My dog's name is Moose. He's a great dog. I feel like me and Moose are kind of like soulmates, you know. And, you know, he's a great dog. You know, right now he's just laying on my bed. I'm doing this podcast, talking in his mic. Moose, he's not even paying. Yeah, he might be asleep right now. You know, sometimes I'm, a, I'm always checking if Moose is breathing, you know. He'll be sleeping next to me in bed. And I'm like, this guy's been a little, a little stiff for a few minutes here, and I'll, I'll, I'll put my, put my finger against his nostrils, against his nose, and he won't like that, and he'll shake me off. He'll be like, "Yo, what the fuck are you doing, man?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm sorry, Moose. I didn't mean. I, I, I was just afraid you were dead, you know." But yeah, I was back to what I was talking about. Dog parks, man. Dog parks are crazy, yo, because. You know, I feel like, a, you know, at least at the dog park by my house, a little social circle has been forming among the frequent visitors of the dog park. Life. Let's go to the dog park. I just had a long day at work. I kind of want to just lay in bed and sleep. But you know what? I'm a good father. I'm not a, bed, I'm not a deadbeat dad. Let's go to the dog park. So I bring him to the dog park, and he plays with the other dogs, you know? There's a little husky there. There's a, there's a big husky there's a, you know, who else? There's some terriers, some chihuahua, all, all types of dogs, you know. We go to the dog park, and there's lots of dogs, but there'll also be lots of people. And I don't know how I feel about those people, you know, because they be, they be chit-chatting amongst each other, talking to each other, having a good time. And I'm, I kind of just walk in, you know, wearing my hoodie, Sometimes I'll wear my mask even though we're outside and I don't really need to wear the mask just because I want to be the creepy guy wearing the mask and the hoodie in the dog park and just, you know, there'll be, there'll be the normal social group standing, standing in the dog park and I'll kind of stand 30 feet away and stare at Moose as he goes over to that circle and plays with the dogs in the circle and the people there and I just kind of stare, you know, with a blank stare at them, you know. And probably, you know, if I ever, you know, if someone ever accuses me of, of some type of crime, those people at the dog park, will, those people at the dog park will probably say, you know what? I knew that fucking guy did it because <laughs> he's just a fucking weirdo and would he's just a fucking weirdo and would would stare at us at the dog park, you know, and not talk. I don't know what it is, man, but I kind of I kind of don't want to talk to them for whatever reason. And, you know, the way I justify it in my mind is kind of like, you know, the people in that circle are kind of like, you know, in their late 20s, early 30s. You know, we got some people with no hair. We got some people, you know, all types of body, body shapes. You know, once you exit college, people's body shapes start, you know, start stretching in some places, start widening in some places. You, you, you know, you, you get a little shorter, you get a little taller. People's body shapes just kind of get weird out in college, you know, because like in college, you know, you got that metabolism, you got that me- me- metabolism, and you can just look hot, you know, you can fucking eat chicken tenders, you can eat 20 chicken tenders at 2 a.m., you know, and take three shots of vodka, and you look up, you wake up the next day, you fucking look like a Greek god, you know, you hit that gym up, hit the elliptical, baby burn them calories and you still be looking hot you know but once you get outside of college you know the body starts getting a little weird it starts you know getting a getting a little a little tub tub on the stomach you know you know you eat that nutella then nutella just sits kind of you know sits in your gallbladder makes you look like uh you know makes you look like the penguin from batman you know from Batman to, you know, the old Tim Burton Batman, you know, make you look like, uh, you know, 
make you look like a like a like a water balloon that's got a little too much water in it that might might be about to pop. But you know, I'm not trying to physically sh- you know fat shame phys- you know fuck it. You know, I'm I'm 23, so I still got my metabolism going. But you know, give me five years, I'll probably start looking like shit too. So I'm not trying to shame nobody for looking any. You know, we all we all beautiful in our bodies. You know. But I'm just saying, you know, that's a fact. We all we we start looking different as we get older. You know, shit gets saggy. Anyway, you know, I, you know, the people who socialize at the dog park, you know, they're kind of, you know, they're in their late twenties, early thirties. And like I said, I'm 23, so I'm like, damn. There's an age gap. There's a there's an age gap here. There might be a generational gap too. You know, because I'm I'm fresh out of college. I'm trying to figure my shit out. These people. They're kind of settling. They're you know they're on the opposite end of that, on the opposite end of that tunnel where they're they're starting to settle down and get their shit together, you know. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if I'm I want to even get my shit together yet, you know, because part of the fun of being 23 and being young is that I get to like not have my shit together and like you know kind of be reckless. But anyway, this is a this is a long winded way of saying you know I kind of look at them and I, you know that judgmental part of me starts thinking like damn. If I walk up to these people and I try to be friends with them, what does that say about me, dog? What does that say about me? Because am I just like, you know, am I that desperate for friends where I'm going to just walk up to a bunch of 29, 32-year-olds and be like, what's up? What's What What job do you work, dog? Oh, you work, oh shit, you, you work in marketing, dog? That's crazy, yo. Oh shit. You a software engineer, dog? That's crazy, yo. Oh, let's let's talk shop about you know condos, buying condos, buying property, having children, you know, getting married. What's oh, what's it like to be married? You know, oh shit, you guys, you know, it's kind of boring sometimes. Damn, dog, I, damn, you know. Go up to them, be like, yo, what's a, what the fuck is a Roth IRA, man? Go up to them, be like, yo, what was it? What was it like? What was it like during the Vietnam War, man? You guys that old, right? You guys, you guys, did you guys get drafted, dog? What's up with that, yo? You know, but uh, that's kind of what I'm. I don't. I, I'm afraid of like being in that. I'm afraid of getting older, man. I'm afraid of getting older. I'm 23 and I already feel old, my, cause my birthday is coming up in January, and I'm gonna be. I'm. Sh- I'm like shit. I'm gonna be 24, dog. I'm gonna be 24. I look at these young ass motherfuckers like a fucking, a fucking Billie Eilish, a fucking Olivia Rodrigo, a fucking Conan Gray. These young ass motherfuckers making me feel old, dog. I'm like, damn, I'm 20, cause you know I feel like there's this ticking, there's there's this time pressure, you know, cause once I turn 30, man, shit, dog, shit. So I feel like you know. I feel like I gotta start getting my shit together because I don't wanna, you know, and not have accomplished anything, you know? So I'm like, shit. I, I feel all this pressure to kind of like, you know, enjoy my life, enjoy my youth, and kind of enjoy what's going on there. But, yeah, I feel like, you know, if I, if I, you know, if I join this group of people and start talking to these 33-year-olds, man, shit, like, what? I don't know. It's like kind of accept. It's like it's me saying, "Damn, I don't, I don't know if like you know, I I can even enjoy my youth anymore. I don't even know if I'm young anymore. Maybe, maybe this is all there. You know, it's kind of me just giving up on my youth before my youth has even happened. I'm just saying, you know what? Maybe this is it, man. Maybe I just gotta be friends with these <laughs> these old ass people and start thinking about settling down and 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 you know, paying my taxes." But I do pay my taxes, IRS, if you're listening to this. But, like, you know, it's scary, man. It's scary growing up. And I got nothing against those people at the dog park, you know. I'm sure they're great people. I'm sure they're fun people who are awesome to be around. And, you know, I don't even think, like, it's a kind of backwards way to think that, like, you know, older people can't be fun or interesting. In fact, they're probably more interesting because they have got more life experiences and, and more shit to talk about, you know. You come up to me, you start talking about... You start talking about shit. I'm like, damn, dog. I I can only talk about my high school girlfriend, man. I I don't even, re- even really lived any shit, you know. You go up to Olivia Rodrigo, st- start asking her questions, you know. 
you know, that girl two years ago was watching uh, watching the Disney Channel, you know, unironically, you know. You go up to a, you know, you go up to a Billie Eilish, you know, uh, you know, that bitch, that girl wasn't even alive for 9-11, you know. You could walk up to a 33-year-old be like, damn, dog. What was it? What was it like during 9/11, man? Did you feel afraid for your life? You know. You know. Did you think World War III was about to happen? You know. You can have, you can have some real talk about life and death with a with a with an older person. You know. So that makes them more interesting. But you know, I'm just afraid. You know. So it's it's nothing against that group of people at the dog park. It's nothing against older people. It's really like an internal thing that like I gotta get better at. I gotta be less afraid, you know. I gotta be more, more accepting of myself, I guess, you know, and and where I am at life. Cause you know, I feel this pressure to like accomplish, you know, I'm accomplished so much, you know. You know, me and my friend were on the phone the other day, and we were looking up some dogs from our high school, and he's and we we saw some motherfuckers getting their fucking PhDs in math, and I was like, damn, I don't even like math. But that made me feel like I wasn't doing shit with my... I'm like, damn, these motherfuckers doing shit in math. You know. I'm sitting here. You know. I'm sitting here with Moose. Just watching Netflix. You know. You know. I just ordered $30, $30 of stuff on DoorDash. And 15 of those dollars were in fees. You know, what? what am I doing with my life? But, you know. I feel like, you know, that, that pressure is kind of unwarranted to put on myself. And plus, it's like, you know, it, it's just life, you know. It's just life. Sometimes you live your life and and you just live it, you know. There's nothing wrong with living living your life some type of way or, or being a certain way. Or, you know, there's there's no guide that says you have to accomplish this much or you're a failure. Or, you know, you have to hit this certain mark by this time in your life or you're a failure, you know. So... That's me, dog, and that's that's the people at the dog park, and Moose, you know, he really enjoys, you know, having his friends at the dog park, and, uh, you know, even though his dad is kind of antisocial, but yeah, man, uh, what's up, let's talk about what this is, you know, 18 minutes in, this is a, you know, trying to, trying this podcast thing out, um, that's really it, man. That's that's really it. I'm just, I'm just a guy living my life. I'm gonna just talk talk my shit. What's going on in my life? I you know a lot of podcasts. They come from interesting people. You know, comedians, actors, actresses. Um, you know, you know people from interesting walks in life. Me, I'm just a guy. So if you if you're here for a podcast from just a guy, you come to the right place, dog. But let's keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, the other day, you know, the people at the dog park were had their dogs all dressed up in costumes for Halloween, you know. And by the time this episode is out, it's probably going to be Monday. So that's going to be the day after Halloween. But, you know, the people at the dog park had their, their dogs all dressed up in costumes. And they had, uh, you know, there's a little... There's a little hot dog, dog, you know. There's a little, a little crocodile dog, a little rainbow dog, and you know, I was, you know, I got, you know, I, I think what happened was the the people in the social circle kind of coordinated with each other. Oh shit, let's bring our dogs to the dog park in costumes on this Thursday. It's gonna be real cute. We're gonna take some pictures for Instagrams. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna bring a lot of joy to our lives. And I kind of just walked in with Moose, who was not dressed up, and I was kind of like. What's up, dogs? <laughs> I'm just here. I'm just here to play around, man. Moose ain't got a costume. We just here to hang out, dog. What's up? We bring. We brought our birthday suits. Moose brought his birthday suit because he ain't wearing shit, dog. But yeah, that's Halloween, man. That's hollow. That's Halloween. Is that spooky shit, bruh? Is that spooky time of year, motherfuckers? We talking. We talking skeletons. You know. We talking. We talking jack o' lanterns, you know. You know, we not talking John O' lanterns. We not talking. 
We're not talking Jeffrey O' Lanterns. We're talking Jack O' Lanterns, dog. That's what's up. That's what's up. We talking. We talking blood and shit, dog. That's Halloween. That's Halloween for you. You know, there's a spirit Halloween by my uh, by my apartment, and I I had to go to Petco the other day to uh, get some dog food for Moose. This is a, this is a dog heavy first episode, man. It's a dog heavy first episode, but anyway, I, w- I went to the Petco to get some food for Moose, and um, I didn't know there was a spirit Halloween, you know, that popped up by the Petco. But normally, you know, the Petco's not that not that popping. You know, there's not that many people at the Petco. There's a little strip mall. There's a FedEx. You know, who the fuck uses FedEx? You not no one's no one's shipping shit anymore. You know, you know if you got nudes, you, you're not printing them out and you know and mailing it out through FedEx. You know, you, if you got nudes, you're just sending them through the through the texts. You know, through the Snapchats. So no one really uses FedEx. And uh, there's a laundromat in that strip in that strip mall, you know. What's up with laundromats, man? People got a, you know, I never use a laundromat, but that seems like a lot of work, you know. You know, you got to bring all your clothes there and hope no one steals your shit. But maybe that's classist for me to say, dog, because I feel like you know, is normally one of the people who are not as fortunate who have to use a laundromat. But anyway, laundromat not really that popping. But anyway, the whole point is that you know this strip mall. Ain't, ain't really that popping most of the time, but I went there, and, so, and all of a sudden, all, all the parking spaces were taken up. I was like, what the fuck is going on, man? I'm trying to park and get some food for my son, and ev- everyone's at the Petco today for some reason, and then I realized there's a fucking Spirit Halloween, you know, that's opened in the strip mall, and there's, li- there's literally people lined up out the door for this, this Spirit Halloween, and I'm like, damn. I didn't know Spirit Halloween was that popping, where you got people lining up outside the door for for Spirit Halloween, and people taking up all the parking spots in the strip mall. You know, but I think uh, I think Halloween's kind of kind of you know it's kind of become a bigger thing recently in the last few years. I don't know why, but um, you know, I remember in 2015, you know, I was still in high school, and you know, no one really fuck with Halloween. It was kind of just a it was, it was, you know, it wasn't a real holiday, you know, it was kind of just like some random shit that no one really cared about, you know, no one dressed up, no one gave each other candy, you know, you know, you were lucky if you got a boo from someone, you know, you know, and you were lucky if you had a boo, because, you know, high school is all about, you know, you know, getting, getting with the, you know, finding, finding true love, but that's another story. But yeah, 2015, no one's really giving a shit about Halloween. But I feel like, you know, in the last few years, people start giving more of a shit about Halloween. You know, you, 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 go on, you go online, all these motherfuckers posting pictures of themselves dressing up for Halloween, you know? You go on, you go on Twitter today, you got, you, got, you got every celebrity dressing up for Halloween. All these, all these crazy-ass costumes that cost $20,000, you know? I, I saw... I saw uh, you know what's that girl's name? The the Haley from Haley plus Chloe. She dressed up as a fish, dog. She dressed up as a sexy fish. That's crazy, man. There's some crazy costume, but everyone seems to be dressing up for Halloween nowadays, and I wonder why that is. I wonder if it's because you know we feel so lost in modern society that for one day, you know, when we can escape from our true selves and pretend to be someone else, we we. We really relish that opportunity, you know. We wanna, we wanna, we wanna dress up, and just forget who we are, because modern society has kind of fractured our personalities so much, you know, through through social media, and you know, there's there's so much input nowadays that, that for one day we could just forget about it all, you know, and be a little sexy fish, you know. Maybe that's what we really want. But yeah, man, Halloween's been popping recently. I, I mean, I haven't dressed up in probably, I haven't dressed up since 2016, which was my senior year of high school. My senior year of high school, everyone fucking dressed up for Halloween, dog. Everyone dressed up because Halloween started getting more popping. Because, you know, that, that, that shift kind of happened where Halloween started getting more popping, you know, 2015, 2016. You know, and I dressed up as, uh, I dressed up as, uh, that, uh, that Harley Quinn that Harley Quinn lady from the Suicide Squad. 
in the in uh actually it was 2015 actually the f- halloween 2015 and that was before the suicide squad movie even came out i saw that trailer i was like damn that's one sexy lady i want to be that lady for halloween and i'll drag my ass to party city i got some sh- I, you know i that's that shit was complicated to make man you know i had to i had to I had to buy a fucking those those fucking leggings, dog. You know, I had to I had to buy some paint from Blix Paint Short Store. Shout out New York, dog. Blix. You know you know the vibes. But uh, I had to buy some paint, paint up a shirt. I had to buy a fucking wig, dog. I had to buy a blonde wig to be Harley Quinn, and then I had to get my my late my friend in high school who was a girl, but not my girlfriend. She was just my friend who was a girl, and I had to get her to do pigtails on that wig so that I could be Harley Quinn. And I had her, you know, paint shit on my face. And I had my friend, you know, I wasn't really that close with the ladies, so I asked my friend, my guy friend who had a girlfriend, to ask her girlfriend to give me a bra so I could wear that bra and have fake boobies for Halloween. You know, there's, there's nothing funnier than a guy with fake boobies for Halloween, dog. But yeah, I was Harley Quinn dog, and that was that was you know that was it. That was probably you know that was the last time I dressed up, and that's probably the best costume I ever had, dog. You know, I felt sexy, dog. I felt sexy in that costume, dog. That was a good ass costume, man. And before you come at me, before you come at me with that toxic toxic masculinity energy, telling me I can't be Harley Quinn, why don't you sit your ass and shut the fuck up, dog? Why don't you sit sit your ass down and shut the fuck up, dog? Cause I'm so in touch with my myself and who I am and my masculinity that I'm not afraid to dress up as Harley Quinn for Halloween, dog. Huh? What's up with that, man? You probably so afraid, you know, you you so afraid to be who you are, you know, you insult another people, dog. So why don't you sit your ass down and get in touch with your masculinity first before you come at me, dog? That's what's up. That's what the fuck is up, dog. But yeah, man, that was Halloween. <laughs> that was Halloween in 2016, man. And uh, I feel like there's nothing funnier than for Halloween than than uh, I feel like the funniest funniest thing you get for Halloween is just some random shit, you know? Because most people are giving out some candies for Halloween, some chocolates, but um, you know, I feel like it'd be funny to give out, you know give out little little chicken drumsticks or some shit to to children for Halloween. So, you know, if I ever become a dad, if I ever move to a neighborhood where, you know, a little little, you know, little costumed kids are coming up to my door, I'm going to hand out little Popeyes, Popeyes fried chicken to, to them, you know. I feel like there's no, sh- you know, in you know, there's there's no shit funnier than just walking around with a fucking with a fucking rotisserie chicken and eating that all by yourself, man. You know, just 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 buy a fucking eight dollar rotisserie chicken and start eating that shit for lunch. That that's just that's just peak comedy, dog. I don't know why, but uh, that's just peak comedy. Cause it's just so big, you know. It's it's ridiculous. How could one person eat a rotisserie chicken? And you just gonna eat that rotisserie chicken, dog? You just gonna have all that protein? You're not gonna have some carrots, a little cauliflower. You're not gonna have some vegetables with that. You're just gonna eat that. You're just gonna eat that rotisserie chicken straight up dog but guess what it's an eco- it's an economic meal because it's only eight dollars and you could probably have some leftovers for dinner too but yeah man you know you walk around with a rotisserie chicken you walk around with a gallon of milk and start drinking that you know there's just nothing funnier than just walking around with, with large bulk size items of food or drink and and and, and consuming that you know because people will look at you and be like Man, that's ridiculous. How could that person be drinking a whole gallon of milk? But you know, it's you know, you can pull it off because you know, a gallon of milk only costs like four dollars. So it's actually you know, it's a it's a cheap way to be funny. So you know, I feel like there's a Halloween costume in there somewhere. You know, you walk around with like ten gallons of milk, and people will be like, "What the fuck's going on?" But guess what? That costume only costs forty dollars. You know, and, and these other costumes cost, you know, a hundred bucks. You just walk around with, you know, five gallons of milk in each hand. You know, in little bags and be like, what's up? I'm the milkman. 
that's probably some funny shit, dog. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. What the fuck else is up? Dude, I bought some... What the fuck is up with the ports, man? I don't know what the fuck is going up with the ports. I just hear people saying the ports are shut down or there's shit in the ports. The ports are blocked. I don't know if we got some krakens up in the ports or something. Something's blocking the ports. Uh, you know, I don't know if the boats... You know, we, we calculated something wrong with the buoyancy of the boats, and now the boats can't move. You know, what the fuck's, you know, I don't know if we need the Coast Guard to come up in that bitch and start pushing boats around. You know, you know, maybe we maybe we need a, I don't know what the fuck's going on, man. But the, the ports are blocked, and that's not good, because I, I think that has something to do with the, the, with the price of gas. Because I paid $5.00. Over five dollars for a gallon of gas the other day, and I was like, "What the fuck is up with this shit, bruh? What the fuck is up with this shit? I cannot be paying five dollars for gas, bruh." I just had that whole spiel in the beginning of how I, how I can't be affording puppies because I'm I'm not that I'm not that rich, man. And the Bay Area is expensive to live here, dog. Rent is expensive. You know, food is exp- it's just expensive here, so I cannot be paying five dollars for gas. But I was like, guess what? I'm either gonna pay five dollars for gas, or I'm gonna have to push this car home. So I paid five dollars for gas, dog. But I don't know what the fuck is up with the ports. I should probably read an article about that. But we need to fix the ports, dog. We need to fix the ports. I don't know if we need to get the Avengers out there. I don't know if we need to get Jason Momoa to start doing some shit. You know, asking the fish people to. To move the port, you know, move the boats around. What's up with the? What's up with? Why is so much shit sent in through boats, dog? We got planes too. If the, you know, why don't we fly some shit in, dog? Why don't we just fly some shit in, dog? How how could the? Why are the ports blocked now, dog? I don't know. Let me let me look this up. Let me look this up. I got a computer in front of me. I could look this up. Why? Are the ports blocked? Why are the ports so congested? That's the. W- All right. The causes are varied and complex. Labor disruptions, cargo surges from big ships, infrastructure needs, marine terminal productivity, and equipment shortages, among other causes. The result is chronic gridlock at many ports. Ships are stranded offshore for days, even weeks, waiting to unload what the fuck dog how is this you know why we got so much shit dog imagine you order some shit from from fucking amazon you know you got a little you got a little you got a little pair of shoes coming in from amazon from china and the ports are blocked and, and amazon says Your shoes are just fucking in the ocean right now. (laughs) I don't know what I don't what whatever's going on with the ports, man. I'm gonna need you to fix that, Joe Biden. And I don't know if that has anything to do with the gas. Why you know? Let me. Why is gas so expensive? That's another question I could ask the internet. Why is gas so expensive in California? San Francisco gas prices hit an all-time high. Here's the main culprit, dog. Why can't you just tell me the main culprit in the title, dog? Because you want me to click on an article and, and see your fucking ads. Gas prices are rising. The main one is the COVID-19 pandemic. Production has taken a big hit, Dahan said. Demand plummeted early in the pandemic and has rebounded. There's not enough crude oil available to meet demand. Oh, so maybe it's not related to the ports. But... Some shit's being fucked up in America, dog. I the ports are fucked up. We don't got enough gas. You know, I don't, there's some fucking infrastructure bill in Congress that's not getting passed. Whatever the fuck's going on, we gotta fix this shit, dog. We gotta fix this shit. But yeah, God bless America. All right, what the fuck else happened this week? I got fucking sick this week, man. I got sick on like Wednesday. You know. I'm kind of afraid to be sick now. I don't want to tell anyone that I'm sick because I feel like everyone's going to assume I got the COVID-19, bruh. You know, you know, but it was just a little, a little, you know, I got a little sniffles, you know, I got a little sniffle in my nose, started having to use the Kleenex, 
If I blow my nose, you know, not, not a big deal, but I'm afraid people are going to think I got COVID and then banish me or some shit, you know? They're going to lock me up and, and burn me at the stake so I don't spread the bacteria, the COVID bacteria. But, but that's that, dog. I don't know. I got sick. Uh, you know, the weird shit, you know, whenever I get sick, dog, that's when I started wanting to eat the unhealthiest food, man. I got sick and I was like, yo, what if I fucking got Popeyes right now? What if I fucking got a fucking, a fucking jumbo al pastor burrito? It's like dog. It's like yo, other other part of my brain. That's not a healthy. That, that's not a get well. That's not a get well soon meal, dog. You're gonna inflame your whole body if you start eating all all that grease, man. You gotta, you know, eat a fucking salad, dog. <laughs> Get some fucking chicken noodle soup in your body, dog. What? Why the fuck are you craving all this whack ass shit, man? But yeah, I feel like you know, I, I resisted the urge to get that that al pastor burrito, and I kind of just ate some rice, and I kind of just sl- slept extra, and I slept off that sickness, dog. I, I realized that whenever I don't get enough sleep, man. You know, it's like the ant. You know, the the little white blood cells in my body. You know, it's like they're working overtime. It's like, dog, what the? You know, you told me we were clocking out at eleven, dog. You got us working overtime. You know, you didn't pay us enough uh, to fucking defend your body against these colds and these viruses. And so we just gonna fucking work, walk off the job, dog. You know, until you know you give us our paycheck, until you pay us that double OT. Nah, dog. You not you not getting this white blood cell treatment. You you on your own, dog. And you know that's probably why I got sick because I I pushed my body a little too hard to uh, try and take care of myself. But yeah, I just slept extra. I slept, you know, hit my hit my body with a little ten hours. Oh, uh, here's a little treat, body. Here's a little treat. Get to sleep a little extra, and I felt all better. But yeah, man, that shit about eating salads is true, dog. I feel like I gotta eat healthier. Because, you know, you know what I just ate for dinner, dog? I just ate a fucking Frito pie. I don't know if you know what a Frito pie is. But basically, a Frito pie is, you know, you buy Fritos. Those little corn chips. By the way, dog, like, Fritos, I know, I feel, I feel like some people like to shit on Fritos, man. But Fritos, man, when I was like eight years old, that was my shit, dog. My dad used to take me to this... You know, take me to the public pool to swim. You know, and if I swam well, he will give me a little dollar to go to the vending machine. And I buy myself a pack of Fritos. Fritos is good shit, man. I don't want to hear nobody talking shit about Fritos. But yeah, Frito pie, apparently, you know, my friend, my friend from Arizona told me about the Frito pie. And apparently they eat this in Arizona. But she told me about the Frito pie and I was like, I'm going to make the Frito pie. But anyway, the Frito pie is Fritos. Then on top of the Fritos, you put some chili then on top of the chili, you put some cheese, and you melt the cheese, you know, and that's a Frito pie. And if you look at the food groups there, you, you see you got chips, you got meat, and you got dairy. And that that's not really a recipe for uh, for health, you know. That's no sweet greens, you know. That's no, that's no sweet greens. What the fuck is a, a, a sweet greens, dog? I feel like, you know, in the last three years, sweet greens got really big. And, and you know, whoever came up with sweet greens is running kind of some kind of scam, dog. Because, like, fucking lettuce is so fucking cheap, dog. You go to Safeway, you go to Safeway, they're fucking selling you a fucking gallon, a fucking trash bag of lettuce for, like, for, like, 50 cents, dog. You know, and if you forget, you know, if you if you come up with only like two dimes or something, they're like, whatever, just take this fucking lettuce, dog. We don't want this shit. Just get the fuck. Take. They just start. They just start. You know, they start getting aggressive with you. They're like, yo, buy buy our fucking lettuce, man. Get the fuck out of this lettuce, dog. I don't want it. Get the fuck out. Take this fucking lettuce and go, man. You know, at the grocery store, lettuce is so fucking cheap, man. And at Sweet Greens, they're selling this lettuce for like fifteen dollars in a bowl. I'm like, yo, what the fuck, dog? I walk up in that bit, I buy a, I buy a, I buy a salad, and I look at the salad. I'm like, dog, dog. There's like, 
There's like two dollars worth of material in here, and you charging me fifteen bucks for this? You know, I see some lettuce, ten cents. I see some sweet sweet potato. You know, the most expensive thing in this bitch is is the goat cheese, bruh. And you put like two little nibbles in here. But that's sweet greens. And I was talking about Frito pies, and a Frito pie is not sweet greens, and it's not healthy. But I ate a, I just ate a Frito pie for dinner, and that's not healthy, dog. I, you know, and like I was saying earlier in this episode, you know, I'm 23, so I'm lucky that I can just eat random shit and I got the metabolism to waste that away. But you know, if I if I start being the age of those people in the dog circle, and I eat a Frito pie, you best believe my body's gonna become distended, dog. You're gonna see some some shapes on my body you never seen before. You're going to see my body be a fucking rhombus, bruh. You're going to see my body be a fucking trapezoid. A fucking trapezoid, dog. A fucking parallelogram up in this bitch. Dog, do you... Dog, I can't believe I just said... Tra- I don't... Why the fuck did I need to learn what trapezoid is in a fucking middle school, dog? I don't even... What is that? Sh- the trapezoid is fucking... You know, two sides are parallel, two sides are not parallel. Why the fuck does that shit matter, dog? What? Nothing in life is a fucking trapezoid. You don't have trapezoid TVs. I guess you could have a trapezoid window if you're living in like some modern shit, but like, you know, every, everything's a fucking rectangle, or a square, or a circle, dog. Cause, cause if you if you got a trapezoid in your house, if you got a trapezoid piece of furniture, you can't fit that shit with square pieces of furniture, dog. You're gonna have some like empty space, cause you know. You push up a trapezoid against a square, it's not gonna fit. It's not gonna click together. So you know, if you if you buy one piece of trapezoid furniture, you're gonna buy you got your whole house needs to be trapezoids, and you're gonna start having them play Tetris in that bitch, flipping shit upside down, and and you, no one wants to do that shit, dog. But um, yeah, trapezoids, dog. I I don't know. I don't wanna, you know. But yeah. I can't be eating Frito pies all the time, cause otherwise I'ma look like a trapezoid, and I need to start eating some salads. That's why I pay the fifteen dollars for sweet greens, dog. Cause I'm like, yo, even though I know you ripping me off sweet greens, I fucking need these greens in my body, dog. Otherwise I'ma start looking, looking like a turd, dog. So that's what's up with that. I started. I need to start making myself more salads, bro. I need to. I need to go to Safeway and start, start getting that lettuce. Getting them tomatoes. Getting them avocados. Getting some croutons up in this bitch. I realized the key to salads, bruh. I made myself, you know, a few salads last week. Because I was trying to be more healthy. The key to salads, bruh. You just gotta hit that bitch with a lot of dressing, bruh. Because sweet greens, they fucking hit that. They give you a big ass container of dressing, dog. They're like, yo, we know this is gonna taste like shit. But just pour this dressing on it, dog. Pour this magic sauce, dog. This sauce, dog. This sauce is all oil, dog. But if you hit yourself with dressing, you know, you feel healthy. And it actually is healthy. You know, it's more healthy than eating fucking Frito pies. Even if you add dressing. And it also tastes kind of better if you add dressing. So just, just add more dressing, dog. If your salad tastes like shit, just add more dressing. And I'm going to get back to you if I start looking like a trapezoid. If I start looking like a trapezoid, I'm gonna tell y'all to lay off the dressing. But yeah, there's that's that bitch. All right, what else is up, dog? Online dating, man. Online fucking dating. What the fuck is up with that shit, dog? What the what the fuck is up with online dating, dog? I've been I'm on all all the fucking apps, man. I'm on Tinder. I'm on Bumble, dog. I'm on Hinge. I even thought about downloading fucking Plenty O Fish. Or fucking coffee meets bagel. But I'm like, I don't know if I'm that desperate yet. Where I gotta hit the second tier of apps, you know. I'm a, you know. We gonna go, we gonna go one layer deep. And I don't know if I'm desperate enough to go two layers deep yet. But we gonna see. But I'm on all the fucking apps, dog. And none of that shit. I get, I get zero matches, dog. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me, dog. I think I'm not, I'm not taking good picks. Or I'm not picking the right picks. Or I'm, I'm not picking the right prompts or, or writing an interesting enough bio. What I, what I don't know what the fuck is up, dog. But online dating for me, that shit is whack. 
And it's probably got something to do with me being a guy, you know. Because from what I heard from all my female friends, if you a female, it's a lot easier to get matches, dog. And that's probably because all the apps are sausage fest, man. So if you, you know, I'm just, I'm joining that sausage party. I'm bringing, you know, I'm bringing my little bratwurst to the party. You know, you know, imagine, imagine you're going, imagine you're going to a barbecue, right? And you already got 10 hot dogs on the grill. 10 hot dogs on the grill. And there's five people at the party. And you show up and you're like, yo, dog. I brought another bratwurst and you slapped out on the grill and everyone's like dog what the fuck dog we we didn't need another bratwurst we are we already got 10 hot dogs on the grill five people you add now we got 11 11 11 horizontal meats on the grill and not enough people and that's what it's like on the dating apps dog because we got we got way too many horizontal meats and not enough you know the sub if if you ever took AP macroeconomics, you know, supply and demand, there's an imbalance there. So that's probably part of the reason why it's hard to find matches. But also part of the reason is probably because I ain't got good picks, dog. I I, I ain't got good picks. Because I don't be going out, you know, with, a photo, with, with the mentality to have a photo shoot, you know. You know, I just live my life. You know, and and if someone says, "Hey, you want to take a selfie at the bowling alley?" or "Hey, you know, let's take a picture of you on a roller coaster," or "Hey, let, you know, we're in front of this ma- this fountain. Let's take a picture." You know, I'm I'm I'm, just, I'm unprepared. You know, I didn't pick out the right outfit. I'm wearing sweatpants. You know, I got I you know I'm looking all types of ways. I'm looking like a trapezoid, but I walk up in that walk up in that bitch and someone snaps a picture of me and then when it comes time to pick take a you know pick a picture for these dating apps i'm like dog i just got these random assortment of photos that people just randomly took of me on random days and i try to sift through them and pick the three best ones but none of them are that good dog and you know i'm not a looker to begin with you know you gotta you gotta hit me from the right angle to make me look attractive dog because i'm not a looker To begin with, you know, you know, you know, this is, this, this isn't a face only a mama could love, but you know, you know, it's a face that only certain people could love. It's a face that only a mama would think is hot. Everyone else is kind of like, hmm, we could take it or leave it, bruh. We could take it or leave it. So, you know, you got to hit me with the golden hour. You got to hit me from, you know, I got to, I got to point my head a certain way. I got to make my hair a certain, you know, you got to wait for me to hit like, you know, the four to five weeks after a haircut. Cause like, you know, right after a haircut, I kind of look like shit too long after a haircut. I look like shit, you know, three to five weeks after I get a haircut. That's when it starts getting to the nice length and looking okay. But you know that's the time frame. I gotta, I'm okay to take a picture. You know I gotta wear wear the right shirt. You know I gotta I gotta you know be hydrated. You know you, you gotta catch me on one of the weeks when I ain't got acne. It's a whole thing. You know it's like one day a year. It's like one day a year when all the shit lines up and a good picture of me can be taken. You know and I actually can look good in a picture. And I can trick ladies into thinking that that's gonna that's the me they're gonna get all the time. But um. It's hard to get that picture, man, and it's hard. Um, it's hard. If, it's hard. You know, it's hard to find pictures to make ladies think. You know, they should swipe right on you, and and, and give you a chance, dog. But um, and those prompts, man, those prompts are fucking hard, dog. They be asking some weird shit, dog, and I'll be staring at those prompts for like two hours trying to think of some, think of some funny shit, man. You know. What how, how the fuck you want me to answer, dog? What am I a fucking uh, what am I a fucking stand-up comedian? You want me to fucking come with some jokes to your prompts, dog? What what do I look like, dog? I look like your court jester, man. This is me, man. Take it or leave it. Take you know, I don't go up to you and start asking you to play the piano. Rand, I don't I don't give you a guitar on the street and tell you to play the guitar. Why are you coming up with, to me with these prompts and tell me to fill out the prompts, dog? What is this? The SAT for love, bruh? I gotta, I gotta fill this out, bruh. 
It was, it was the DMV, bro. You asking me questions, bro. You know, I can't answer these prompts, man. I can't answer these prompts and take them seriously, dog. They be asking you some shit like, you know, what do you look for in a partner? Bro, I don't fucking know what I look for in a partner, bro. I don't know what the fuck I look for. I, someone smart? Someone funny? But everyone fucking thinks they're smart and funny, bro. I don't know what the fuck I look for. You, I just want you to be cool, man. What do you want me to put? What do you look for a partner? I want to find someone cool. Oh, oh, yeah. What the fuck? The fucking girl's going to think, oh, shit, I'm not cool. I'm going to disqualify myself from this guy. No, they want, so I can't be writing shit like, oh, I want a girl who's cool. I got to come with some funny shit. Like, oh, I want a girl. I want a girl who's going to who's gonna fucking eat a Frito pie with me. I got to come with some shit that displays my personality, dog. But I can't be dealing with these prompts, man. But anyway, one segment I wanted to do this week is called uh, Hinge, you know, and this might be a recurring segment. I want to do a segment called Hinge Prompt of the Week. Basically, I'm going to pull up this hinge, and they got all these prompts. And I'm going to just close my eyes and scroll through and just pick a random prompt and answer it live on the podcast, baby. So let's do that right now. I'm closing my eyes. I got it open right here, hinge. I'm scrolling through. I'm closing my eyes, and I'm picking one. Proof I have musical talent. Bro, I played piano from like, you know, I I got level 8 in that bitch in piano. I don't know if you know what ABRSM is, baby. I don't even know what that is. It's some royal school of music in Britain, dog. And basically what they do is send British people. They send British people to America, dog. I can't do an accent. They send British people to America. And they start giving us tests. I can't, I can't do the accent. They start giving us tests, you know, on how good we can play piano. Because apparently the British people are, are, the, are in charge of who's good at playing piano. But anyway, I play piano for a long ass time, dog. And the highest, you know, I prepared mad hard for these tests, dog, that these British people would give. They make you learn a bunch of songs to play on the piano. And then a British guy comes and you fucking play the song for that British guy. And he gives you a score, dog. And my parents were like, yo. We're going to bleep that out because I don't want y'all to know my name. But uh, my parents were like, yo, we're going to have you play the piano. And I was like, okay, dog. But, um, yeah, I played the piano for that shit. And I got level, the highest level you can get for ABR7 is level 8. And I got level 8 on that shit. You know, I I made my way through the levels. I got level 4, then I got level 6, then I got level 7, then I got level 8. And apparently if you get level 8, you are qualified to be a piano teacher. But I don't think I am because I actually I, I haven't played piano in you know since fucking high school. But I got that level eight certification, bitch. So I could play a you know I could play some tunes on the piano, dog. But yeah, I, I would always be so nervous for those exams, dog, because that you know that British guy would come in. And he would sit, he would sit there, and you gotta wear like a suit to your exam, dog. You gotta look nice for these British people. I'd be wearing my suit. I'd be sweating. I'd be like, fuck, dog. And it's like a small ass room. You're, you're, you know, it's just a, it's a small ass room. You're playing piano for this guy, and no one else is in the room except for you and this British guy. I'm fucking, I'm fucking 17 years old. I'm like, fuck, dog. And if you fail that test, dog, you gotta wait another year to take that test because they only send British people around once a year. Once a year to give out this test. So if you fail that test, you got to wait another year. And I was like, fuck, dog. This is my last year of high school. I just want to get this piano shit over with. I just want to fucking pass this test. Dear fucking God, let me get the grade 8 so that, like, you know, I can I can fucking pass this shit, dog. And I fucking pass that shit. And I still have fucking dreams, fucking nightmares sometimes where I don't get, where I haven't gotten the level, the grade 8. On the fucking piano test yet, and that stresses me the fuck out because I'm like, fuck. I, I, there's still there's still a mountain for me to climb, dog. But that's my musical talent, and that's that's the section called hinge prompt of the week, dog. I'm really afraid right now that as I'm recording this podcast, is I'm gonna have some technical difficulties, and I've been recording for 55 minutes, and it's gonna tell me like, yo, dog, your pot your your audio didn't get recorded, and I'm gonna flip my shit. But we'll see what happens, dog. We'll see what happens. All right, I, you know, I've been thinking about therapy, dog. Therapy is crazy, yo. I I think I need to get some therapy because I, I'm going crazy. Um, 
one of my good friends recently decided to cut me out of their life, and that's been some hard shit, dog. That's been some hard shit to deal with, dog, because, like, you know, I was talking to that friend for a long-ass time, and I thought I could really count on that friend. And, you know, for one reason or the other, we're not talking right now, and, you know, I totally respect that person, you know, their boundaries or whatever, but it's just, personally, that's just hard to deal with from an emotional level. And I start thinking, damn, I got to go to therapy to work this shit out, dog, because I don't know what the fuck is going on, dog. But, yeah, man, therapy is scary, dog, because I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to go, you know, go talk to some old, you know, log on to Zoom with some old, old ass guy or, or lady and, and start bearing my soul to them, dog. You know, that's some scary shit. I don't really, I don't really know if I'm ready to, uh, you know, start, just start being like, yeah, uh, you know, I've been through some shit in my life and I start being vulnerable. You know, that word vulnerability is really interesting to me because, you know, in, in some part of my brain, I feel like I'm treat, I've, I've kind of stigmatized that word vulnerable and I don't want to be vulnerable because I want to be strong. I want to keep to myself. I want to be able to push through hard times in life. But, um, you know, I, I've been thinking that I should maybe set up some therapy because, you know, there's it's, it's nothing wrong with figuring out your shit in life, man. And you know, I also don't want to treat therapy as like some kind of, you know, silver bullet for my life, you know, because I don't think, ther- you know, just going to therapy is suddenly going to solve all my problems in life or solve all my mental blocks, man. But, yeah, I think yeah, uh, in my life I I haven't really ever taken a proactive stance on like improving my mental health. And I think maybe I should start signing up for therapy to um take that proactive stance on my my mental health, dog. But yeah, man. Dog, this friend who stopped talking to me, I keep getting notifications in my email that you know, this friend keeps signing into my Netflix on uh different browsers. I'm like, "Dog, how many how many browsers you got, man? You keep signing into my Netflix, dog. But, you know, we still friends, so I'm going to still let you use my Netflix. But, dog, like, what the fuck, dog? You keep you keep signing in an incognito mode or some shit, dog? You downloading, you downloading Firefox, dog? Like, you, you fucking downloading fucking Internet Explorer, dog? What, what's up with this shit, dog? Either that or my friend is giving away my Netflix account to random people, which which would suck, but... It is what it is, dog. If, but yeah, if you listen to this friend, hopefully we can be friends. But you probably not listen to this. But um, yeah, dog. What's what else? I want to kind of move to a different city, man. You know, like I said, I'm living in the Bay Area. I grew up in New York City. I moved to the Bay Area. I kind of been thinking I want to move to Nashville, man. I never even been in Nashville. I don't even know the first thing about Nashville. That it could be full of racist white people cuz it's in kind of in the south in Tennessee. Maybe that's a stereotype I shouldn't I shouldn't put on Nashville. You know, you didn't do anything to deserve that Nashville. I'm sorry. I take that back. You probably a good place Nashville, but Yeah, I've been thinking about moving, dog, cuz like You know, I don't really like living, you know, this my whole life I've been living in kind of in the co- on the coast. In these very liberal places, I feel like you know. And New York is different. In New York, there there are you know there's people, but I feel like in the Bay Area, there's not really people. People, you know, everyone's kind of walking around. I don't know. Like I said, everyone's kind of woke in the Bay Area, and they're walking around trying to just be something. I feel like everyone's kind of walking around with a mask on their face, and I can't get get down and talk to some humans, you know, I want to meet some humans, I want to talk with some humans, dog, and I feel like, you know, I want to move to Nashville, dog, I don't know the first thing about Nashville, but I feel like the people in Nashville are some humans, dog, you know, just some people, man, I feel like people in the south are people, and maybe they wouldn't be very welcoming to people like me, because I'm an Asian man, and maybe, you know, there's some racism boiling, you know, I don't know what... what, Did Tennessee vote for Trump? They probably did, dog. So, um... Let's look that up real quick. Not that, you know, I'm good. Not that there's anything wrong, you know. 
I'm not gonna label everyone who vote f- voted for Trump as some kind of evil person, dog. But you know, Donald Trump did win in Tennessee, but Nashville, that shit was uh, that shit was blue, dog. Sixty-four percent blue. So maybe they na- they not so hateful, dog. Like I don't think everyone who voted for Trump is a bad person, you know. Or even you know probably, but you know it's not a it's 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 I don't know. It just makes me a little bit uncomfortable. You know, because he says some shit that's a little questionable. You got to admit, dog. He says some shit that's questionable. So I don't want to label everyone who voted for Trump as a bad guy. But it's a little it's a little questionable, dog. But anyway, I want to move, uh, you know. I'll probably stick around in the Bay Area for a little bit longer. You know, maybe a year or two. But I think it would be nice to move to Nashville. And maybe I'd have better luck on the dating apps there. Because I also feel like part of the problem is the Bay Area... Not a good place for the dating apps, bro. Everyone's kind of dry here, bro. But yeah, I'm gonna move to Nashville. Get hit, hit up the Waffle House, dog. It's gonna be nice, dog. I've been talking for an hour, dog. This is some shit. I really hope this shit, dog. If I have technical difficulties, I'm gonna lose my shit, dog. But yeah, dog. I just kind of want to end this talking about being creative, man. I'm I'm doing this podcast. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably came here from my YouTube channel. Um, introverted madness on YouTube you know you know the vibes but yeah dog I don't know like I said I'm 23 which is kind of young but I also feel like I'm getting old you know and I'm running out of I'm I'm running out of time before I turn 30 and there's so much shit I want to do dog I want to make YouTube videos I want to do a podcast I want to write man writing's my passion dog I like writing I want to get published in a little magazine somewhere a little tin house, a little a little New Yorker maybe one day. You know that's that's me dreaming big. Have my shit in Barnes and Noble, dog. I want to do stand up, dog. I feel like I could I could try my hand at stand up. I don't know if I'm gonna be great. People might start throwing their appetizers at me. People might start throwing some carrots and blue cheese at me. I might get a little buffalo sauce on my face. You know. I might get a little, you know, pe- if start people start throwing glasses of whiskey at me, that's dangerous, dog. You know, I could get myself cut. Don't throw that shit at me, dog. You throw you throw a you throw a baby carrot at me, I'm cool with that. You start throwing you start throwing a beer bottle at me, we going to have to square up, dog. Cuz you could make me lose my eye. So you trying to make me lose my eye? We going to square up in the parking lot. I'm going to try to make you lose your eye, dog. But yeah, man. Um I want to be creative in so many different ways, dog, but it's hard. It's hard to find the time, and it's so much easier to want to be creative than actually be creative, you know? I'll, 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 you know, I'll think to myself during my day job, man, I can't wait to get home and write. And then I get in front of the computer, and I just, I, it just, I get writer's block, and the creativity doesn't come to me, and I can't write. And it's, it's, so, much, it's so much easier to want to be creative than actually be creative. But I feel like the shit, man, the shit is you just got to keep doing it, man. You just got to keep doing it. You know, I, you know, when I started the YouTube channel, I, fuck, I got, I got 900 subs now, dog. And thank you guys for giving me 900 subs. But I never thought I'd get that many subs, man. And I was, you know, I wasn't a good YouTuber at first. And I, you know, and I still got a long way to improve in the YouTubing game. But I slowly got better. And I feel like that's the point with being creative, man. You just got to try. And maybe that's a part I need to teach, you know, a part of my, something I got to come, come to accept and be at peace with is that, you know, there's all this creative stuff I want to do. And I feel like, you know, I'm in such a big rush to do it because I don't want to get old and, 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 you know, waste my time and waste my prime and waste all this creative energy. But, you know, you, I, it just, it's, it's a process, man, one step at a time. And when it, when I get there, I get there, man. Shit, dog. Making a podcast ain't easy. I don't know how the fuck people do this shit, dog. Sometimes I listen to podcasts and it sounds so natural. And I wonder if they they pre-write all their shit, man, because it sounds so natural. I'm like, how the fuck did these people come to this shit on the fly? But um, making a podcast is hard, dog. I'm just doing this on the fly. I got my notes here, but yeah. It's crazy, dog. Anyway. That's the end of the podcast, dog. Episode one, Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Actually, this episode is probably going to come out, you know, the day after Halloween. So happy late Halloween.
Hope y'all had a good Halloween. Hope y'all got hope y'all got some treats and some tricks if you're into that dog. But yeah, man, share the podcast if you like it. Follow the pod, hit the bell, get the notifications, you know, whatever. Spread the word, dog. I'm trying to be creative. I'm trying to get my name out there. I'm just a guy, dog. So if you like the podcast, share the podcast with a friend, dog. All right, that's it. Like I said, dear God, please, before I end this podcast, dear God, please, 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 no technical difficulties when I when I end this podcast. Please let the audio save. All right, dog, that's it. Y'all stay safe out there. Y'all stay sane. Peace.